Hello, this is Maker J101, and here's a little um, ground fault interrupt outlet that seems to have some sort of a failure. Um, we had this installed in our outlet by our pond for about six months now, probably, um, to run our pumps and stuff, and it seems as though it failed because I think it tripped once or twice, or we've had it trip once or twice because of water or something like that. Um, but so. What these are supposed to do is, if a current is going to ground, it trips. So that's so if something is grounded, or to protect people from getting electrocuted. Um, so that's basically what it does. It just turns off if there's any current going to ground. So, <clears throat> so what I, it just stopped working. There wasn't any power getting out there. Um, so I measured the. Um, voltage across here where you put the voltage in and there was voltage but there was no voltage coming out and then after some further examining normally when you push the test button on these the reset button pops out so it doesn't seem to be doing that so there must be a fault inside somewhere um, and I know that it did pop out once or twice before when it was rainy or something and water must have gotten in it <clears throat> but um, it's not doing it anymore so I'm going to take it apart and we'll see what the problem is with it. It's supposed to be UL um, rated, but I don't know. <clears throat> so we'll take it apart and see what's inside. Okay, so here it is with the cover off. Um, not much to it yet, um, but there's the contacts. So as you can see, there's some contacts right there. And we'll just take this apart. So we've got these. There's the contacts. They look pretty in good shape. Um, can't get this one out. So there's the other one. And I guess we have to peel some, I don't know, somehow get it apart the rest of the way. And we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I think I found the problem. So we can take this off. And it smelled kind of burnt too. Um, there's the electromagnet. I guess that would trip it. And it's kind of fried looking. So I guess that's our problem. Um, so I guess this is pretty much trash. So I'm uh, not exactly sure why that would have fried. Um, but you can see the contacts in there. And yeah. Here's a little, um, what is that? Surge protector um, thing. <clears throat> But I guess, let's see, I'm not sure exactly how this would work, but I guess that this electromagnet must have to be on in order to push the buttons down or something. So if that's on, hmm, I'm not really sure how this works, I'll have to figure it out. Okay, so here's a close-up of the coil. And as you can see right there, the wire would come out and it's actually fused off there. There's a black spot there where it actually um, kind of exploded the wire or it melted. Um, but it looks like the electromagnet is probably not supposed to be always on. It actually only turns on when you push the reset button or when it trips. So I'll explain how it works a little bit more in a minute. But the way it senses, if there is, I always thought that if ground was going to the ground plug, um, that it would trip. But that's actually not true. Um, not necessarily. It actually, right here, you can see there is a current coil. So the current, this is where the power comes into the outlet. So both of these terminals here. And it goes through that current term, that current transformer there. So... Because both the hot and the neutral are going through there, they cancel out. So if all of the power, so that goes through there and to the, through here, and then to these little contacts here, which go to the um, output. Um, but <clears throat> if the power that is going in and out, or in and out, um, matches, it's the same amount going in and out, um, if there's 10 amps going in, 10 amps going out, then there will be no current picked up in the current transformer here. It will be canceled out. So, 
if there is a tiny amount of current from here going to ground, so anywhere else, um, then these will not match, and there will be a tiny stray amount of current difference, and this current coil here, the current transformer, will actually pick up a little bit of current, and that will cause the circuit, it'll, the circuit will measure that, and pick that up, and trip, turn on this electromagnet here, which will trip the um, fault. It'll say that there's a fault, but um, there's a little mechanism in there, which, see, there's this little thing has um, a groove in it there, kind of a knobby part, and that's when this is pressed, so if I press this button in, um, it actually, there's a little switch down in there, see, that, there's a little switch in there that's closing right now, so when that closes, so you're pushing the reset button, that closes, activates the electromagnet, let me see if I can do this, so I'm activating the electromagnet right now, there we go, now the, whoops, let me try that again, okay, now, whoop, I actually have to have pressure, okay, there we go, Eh, it's kind of hard to do because the spring is not... Okay, there we go. Alright, so now the contacts are up. So now it would be activated. So now there's outlet. There's power coming out. Now if it trips... Let me see if I can do this with one hand. Because I have to kind of pull on that spring because the spring is not touching anything. Okay, so now if I push the electromagnet in... There we go. So that worked. So, without that electromagnet, it doesn't work. So... You can't push the re you can't push the test button. Well, actually, you could push the test button, and actually, the reset button doesn't pop out as far as I thought it did, um, but it was popped out. So I guess something in the circuitry um, must have made the electromagnet stay on. And I'm, I don't think this electromagnet was actually designed to be on all the time. Um, it looks like a pretty bad solder job. See that big blob of solder there? That's not very well done, and also there's not very good flux on there either didn't get very good flow but yeah it's not soldered the best so that's probably a problem bad manufacturing I guess so I could suppose it could have been moisture but this is dipped in some sort of a um, glue or something but it, 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 it was in a moisture um, resistant box and the box was underneath of something too so not much water could get in it a little bit of moisture maybe where the cords go in but not much so it maybe a little bit of moisture could have gotten in the coil but it shouldn't be on because if the coil was on, then it would be always tripped. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of neat. So now we know how they work. They work. And, um, yeah, I, I guess I could put it back together here and show you how it works with it put together more. Because it works better than... So, I've got these buttons. I could put those together. So the buttons go in there, and the electromagnet coil there. So we push down the reset button. That activates the little switch in there. Let me refocus the camera here. Okay, so here's a better shot of that switch right there. That when you press the reset button, it closes that switch. So now if I push the reset button, the reset button's popped out. Okay, so I close that. So I push it. That switch is closed. Then I... Then, so that activates the electromagnet. So the electromagnet activates. Whoops. Wait a minute. Okay, there we go. Now it is on. So the contacts just closed. So now we're getting power to the um, to the outlet and also to the output too because this there's actually two sets of contacts there and the outlet the output terminals that go to another string of outlets also have contacts there. Um, so. So now it is ready to go. So now if we have a fault, ground fault, um, let me make sure those buttons don't pop out. So there's something wrong with the ground, some power's going to ground, and where it's not measuring the same amount of power going in and out of the outlet. So now the electromagnet activates and it pops out. So pretty simple. Um, and then also the test button does the same thing as the electromagnet basically. So there we go. Works. So, so yeah, neat little device. Um, now I know how they work. Um, and so I wouldn't recommend this model, but um, so 
Right, you can't really see the model number there. I guess that's the model number. But, yeah. So, interesting little autopsy there. Alright, so I'm going to try to demonstrate how this, um, this current transformer will actually pick up current if there's um, some power going from the hot side to ground. So, so both of the, the hot and the neutral wires both go through that current transformer. And so if there's a difference in them, then... So if there's a difference coming... If the current coming out of the hot side and going into the neutral side, basically, um, is the same, then it will cancel out. But if there's a difference, small difference, then because some of the hot is going to ground instead, then there will be a current coming out of the current transformer. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate right here. So I've got my um, motor here. This is my load. And that's grounded. And then we've got my current transformer, which is just a um, current meter, clamp-on meter there. And both the hot and the neutral wires go through the meter there. So now I'm going to plug it in here. And then that's that light bulb there tees off of the hot side. And so that's going to be my imaginary short um, to ground. So, all right, so it's running right now. And as you can see, there is no current on the meter there. When you start up, there's a little bit, just I don't know why that is, but... And now, if I take this light bulb here and connect that to ground on the motor, because the ground wire is not going through the current transformer, we get current there. So that would trip the ground fault. So, yeah. That's basically how it works. Pretty simple. So yeah, that's about it. Um, so, yeah, this thing kind of failed. So... So yeah, um, thanks for watching.